another framework to consider, which also categorizes cultures into this or that, high and low, similarly to Hofstede and Friends, is the GLOBE Project's framework. The GLOBE Project is still doing research today that currently focuses on leadership across cultures. This GLOBE approach has many things to look that look familiar from Hall and Hofstede, Hofstede and Minka. From a hall, we have the importance of time, which they call future orientation, high or low. Not the monochronic or polychronic, which I find more useful from hall. We recognize almost all, all of Hofstede's approach in power distance, uncertainty avoidance, high or low, individualism versus collectivism, with two named different forms of in-group collectivism and institutional collectivism. I'm not really sure that that adds anything really, but there it is. Globe takes a more neutral approach to gender differences in their gender egalitarianism dyad of high or low, where a high gender egalitarianism culture would more likely embrace a feminist philosophy, whereas a low gender egalitarianism culture would have strict and distinct gender roles valued and upheld socially. The US may be considered to be high gender egalitarianism, whereas the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia may be low in this category. We see Klakon and Strokebeck reflected familiarly in the performance orientation dyad, which is another way of saying this group values activity or that group values beingness, which is for GLOBE being high task oriented or action oriented or not. The GLOBE approach also adds assertiveness, which gets to some degree at the masculinity, femininity of Hofstede in a less essentialist male-female dyad, looking at how aggression and assertiveness, high or low, is viewed by the group. The U.S. would probably value high assertiveness, no matter what the gender, don't you think? Collective cultures less so. And finally, humane orientation, which I'm not convinced is that important for explaining cultural differences that cause conflicts, but which is nonetheless a definite cultural difference. Notice the predominance of a high-low dyadic approach here, and notice that there are nine of them. Not all of them are convincingly necessary in my mind, but some are a very good way of approaching culture and cultural difference, definitely adding to our toolbox with terminology and approach. I will summarize all of these in a chart later and advance another way of approaching culture in future presentations. I will also make some recommendations as to what I find useful. While I use these videos as presentations for the courses I teach on intercultural competence, they are also freely available for anyone to watch. So please feel free to like or subscribe to this channel as you see fit or share it. Your feedback is valuable to me to make sure things are clear and may you find the peace that you're looking for.